welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in once again. If you saw last week's video, you will know already that I'm about to go back to Liverpool to buy my second buy-to-let property. If you're tuning in for the first time, then my name's Justin. I'm a relatively new property investor. I bought my first buy-to-let property back in December 2019. It's been rented out for six months since. If you want to watch the video on that, then click the link up here. But if not, stay tuned, because in this video, I'm going to cover how I'm going to prepare to buy my next buy-to-let project. Now, even though I'm sitting down here, which is five hours away from Liverpool, what seems very clear to me right now is that the market is really busy. A lot of people out viewing, offering, and potentially paying over the odds and over, and potentially paying too much for the property, basically. So obviously the market going up is a bit of a good and a bad thing because I've got a property there already and I'd love to see some growth on that. However, I would really have loved to have bought two, three or four more houses before that growth happens. But that's life and we've got to move on. But the main thing for me right now is that I cannot afford to overpay. Yes, it's a big commitment driving five hours with travel costs, hotel costs, a lot of time viewing 20 to 30 houses, but I can't go up there and buy for the sake of it. So I've got to accept that me going up there, I may not come back with a property or a deal that I found, but that's just part of it. And that brings me onto a topic that I get asked a lot right now, and that is, should I buy or should I wait until the market potentially crashes or potentially dips after this current flurry of interest? And the answer is, I honestly don't know. I have no crystal ball and no one knows the answer to that question. So all I can suggest to you is there are ways that you can mitigate the risk. And that main thing for me will be making sure I buy a property with a high ROI. What's your return on investment? So making sure you get a good return on investment with that property. Remember, ROI is taking your annual positive cash flow and then dividing it by the amount of money that you've put into that investment deal and then times it by 100. That gives you your ROI. If you do that on the property that I bought back in December, I think from memory it's about a 19 or 20% ROI. I will definitely be looking for much higher than that. And in fact, I would also be looking to pull money out of my next deal. So we'll definitely be looking at 30% ROI at a minimum. And that way, if the market does decide to dip, then we've mitigated as much risk as possible and we've got a property that is still cash flowing really well. So we've made it to the flat for another day or another weekend of house clearance. I thought whilst here, I might as well come on, give you a quick tour of the flat and let you try and decide and guess what you think the price might be. So just to give you a bit of an idea, this is the 10th floor, two bedroom leasehold flat in the center of Brighton with views over obviously the pier. I'll give you a tour now. As you can see, the flat itself does need a lot of work doing to it, a lot of modernization. It's been a great home for a relative of ours, but now that he's moved out, we've had to clear it for him and we've sold it on his behalf. I hope you've got a good idea in mind now of what you think it's worth. Just to recap, two bedroom flat, leasehold, and it's on the 10th floor in the center of Brighton. And for any of you that guessed, we put it on the market for 200,000 pounds. 
So this is what £200,000 buys you in Brighton. We did, of course, accept a slightly lower offer on it because of the times. However, since then, things have improved a lot and we're hopefully near to exchange. It's actually a very good value flat right now and the person that's buying it will definitely be able to add some value and be able to sell it on for a profit or actually rent it out uh, with a good ROI on it. What's your return on investment? But needless to say, we were helping out a relative. We needed to have it sold. We don't have the free cash right now to buy it. Otherwise, we probably would have. Anyway, moving on to the main topic of this video, and this is a question that I get asked a lot on Instagram, and that is how to estimate rent of a project or a property I'll go to look at and potentially offer on. Now, I actually put this up on my Instagram story, and it was a list of properties that I was going to view in Liverpool. And the point of the story was actually pointing out how many of those properties had gone under offer in a four to five week period. But I actually got a lot of DMs and responses asking me how I calculated the rent of those properties. Because on my spreadsheet, I put an approximate rental uh, a price that I might achieve on there. So I just wanted to come on here and actually address that question. There isn't any fast or easy rule in order to work out a rent. There's no really accurate way of doing it either. But it's actually just gonna be a case of coming on here and doing as much research as possible using different websites and tools and hoping that you can calculate the rent as accurate as possible and maybe even working your figures out slightly lower so using slightly lower rent scenarios just to make sure that you receive the ROI that you'd hope for. So I'm going to give you a few examples now and this is just taking you through how I'd find a property and then potentially just quickly look up how much I think the rent could be. So if I share my screen with you Obviously heading over to Rightmove, I type in, for example, one of the postcodes I'm looking in right now, L15 in Liverpool. I'll go on there, I'll select the properties that I'm trying to look for. So say I'm looking up to 70 or 80,000, I'd ideally like a two bedroom house minimum. And let's just take this first one because it's the first one I've seen here. So Somerton Street, Liverpool L15, this is currently on the market, offers in excess of 70,000. Looks fairly presentable inside, needs a bit of updating as you can see. I'll go down, have a look through the description, check where it is on the, on the map, and then look at the floor plan. Okay, so this one's got a bathroom on the ground floor. Uh, now I'm just showing you here that I use this little extension on Chrome, which gives you these statistics and also gives you the exact postcode for the property that you're looking at. So I'll take this, I'll take it over to the rent section on Rightmove, now you're unlikely to find something in the exact same street, so I'll normally do a quarter mile or a half mile. Obviously maximum number of bedrooms is two. I want to make sure it's a house, and then we want to include letter greed properties. From here, the top one, you know, it's quite newly on. Doesn't look like a perfect match. This one, however, it's letter greed. It's a two bedroom house. It's a few streets away. And um, it's finished to a nice quality, as you can see. So I'd say this one is perhaps a good comparable if you did a bit of work to the other one. You can see it's letter greed, it was up for 485. And that's a good example. Now what I'd probably do from there is also call the agent, which is Hunters, and perhaps talk to them about it and the price that they achieved. If you are an agent, or if you have a friend that's an agent, being able to use this, which is Rightmove Plus, is incredibly helpful. But unfortunately not many property investors have access to that. Moving on again, this is mouse price. Now most people use this for sold prices, but if you actually create a login and register with the website, they will give you an estimate of the monthly rent as well. So you can see that they've given the valuation of just under 70,000 and then the rental estimate of 550 pounds uh, 550 per month. I would say that's actually a bit high and they do come in a little bit high on most properties. So using this as an example, I would say, I would now go on to do look at two, three, four more properties, and perhaps speaking to two or three more agents before coming to my final conclusion when I was offering that on, on that property. But I would you know, imagine that the property is gonna achieve in the region of 450 to 500 based on the area and the size of it. And I would actually work all of my numbers off of 450. I'd even run some of my numbers off of 425 just to make sure that the property cash flows positively each month with a low rent. And that's something that you could explore down the line is if 
you weren't renting it out quick enough or you're having voids or lots of maintenance issues what some people don't realize is you can actually go to local councils in different areas not specifically just liverpool but there's certain parts of the country which you can approach the council and try and work with them to rent your property out so for example they might give you in this example they might give you 425 pounds a month or 400 pounds a month so a lower rent but in return they will guarantee you a tenant between three and five years. They will also cover the costs of any maintenance and at the end of that three or five year period, they might even go in and agree to update the kitchen and bathroom for you. So the reason being behind that is because they have people on their books which they need to house. They won't necessarily be working tenants, but you'll have the benefit of knowing that you're getting the monthly rental each month. This isn't something that I've explored or done myself, but it could be in the future something that I do with my rental properties as I build up my portfolio and as I look for security and guaranteed rent. I hope this video has been useful. I want to help you realise that property isn't always as easy as people make it seem. It's a very good asset to purchase, but there are bumps along the road. It's not all plain sailing. But if you have any questions that I can help you out with, please drop them in the comments below. I'm of course quite a new investor myself, but I'm learning as I go and I want to share these experiences with you. So drop any questions below and I will come back to you. And if you've enjoyed the video, of course, please give it a like and I'll see you next week.